Hey, welcome back to the channel. Little surprise review for you today, brought to you by Playmates. They sent us the new TMNT figures from the upcoming movie, Mutant Mayhem. Uh, these won't be out for another week or two, but we're gonna give you guys a quick uh, little sneak preview of what these characters are gonna look like, uh, both in the movie and, and the toy form here. So we're gonna start by checking out the packaging here on all these guys. A little bit different, and uh, to me, I see it as a little bit of throwback to those older Playmates uh, toys that we used to get for the original Turtles. Uh, you can see the character call out on the side here. But what I like about it is if you notice in the packaging, the all the weapons are bracketed there, and that's exactly how they used to come. <laughs> so that's really awesome that they brought that back. And you also see on the back of the packaging that little bio callout card, which was uh, big to the original Turtles as well. I'm just going to cycle through the packaging here so you guys can see them all. There's not much variety from figure to figure. Uh, the packaging is essentially the same, just the title character on the side there and then offerings in the back. Instead of product shots, though, you'll see here that these figures are just essentially showing the artwork of the characters in the back. So Splinter. Um, Rocksteady, Bebop, Superfly, and Leatherhead. Some really imaginative designs to them, uh, but we haven't seen what they look like in, in figure form yet, so it uh, should be pretty cool when we get to check those out finally. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's basically what we're, we're checking out here on the packaging. It's, it's kind of consistent, not much, not, not a lot of dynamic to it, so you don't really need to worry about keeping it. Uh, the only other thing you see here is they have little um, sort of monikers for each character. So you get Donatello the brains, you got Raphael the angry one, you got Michelangelo the entertainer, and Leonardo the leader. So which kind of stuck with uh, basically the way they've been for the last 30 or so years. Uh, these are how they've been known. Uh, the other thing I notice, and we'll get into more when we look at the characters, is a big thing I like about the turtles is they're always slightly different shades of green, and they seem to keep that consistent here with these figures as well. They're each slightly different shades of green, and the design here kind of reflects their personalities a little bit. So we're going to have varying sizes, which I really like as well. Seeing Raphael, he's the strong ones, being a little bit bigger than the other ones. And uh, Donatello, a little bit scrawnier, he's the brains. Uh, so they kind of uh, featured that here as well, and I really enjoy that, seeing the variety and the sizes in the turtles. And you don't see that in a lot of lines. The original Playmates, they were all the same. They just had different... Um, coloring but they were the same body build everything was the same size symmetrically structural so uh, they didn't have a lot of variety there uh, then you got to the movie turtles and those were essentially pretty much the same uh, mostly the cartoons you saw some variety in the sizes and then you saw it of course in the the michael bay turtle movies where they had a huge disparity in the sizes as well so we're going to see that again here we're going to see a variety in the the sizes from turtle to turtle depending on their own unique attributes so why don't we crack into these guys and check them out if you watch the channel a lot, you know that I don't like unboxings. I don't understand the point of watching someone open something. I just want to see what's inside. <laughs> not so much the box. You can see the packaging here. It's it's a clear window, so there's not much there. Um, I just have my technique of cutting uh, exactly along the line of the package so you don't ruin the card back. I don't keep the packaging, but I often keep the card back on things just so I have a reference point or if I just enjoy the artwork um, sometimes. So I just want to keep the card back and this is a nice way of getting almost all the packaging off without ruining the card back. So we have our, our fearless leader here. We're going to start off with Leonardo. Uh, nothing except the little name here and then uh, I guess a production number. These were all production samples. We got these early. Uh, so you get the sticker on there. And then you get the character here with his accessories. So uh, we're, I see he's held down by a little piece of rope. <laughs> I'm always looking for the way that they're going to make it difficult for me to open this. And this one is a little piece of rope. So I will work on cutting that and getting that off. I should have brought my, my snips instead. There we go. So that's all that's holding him in. Uh, we'll take him out here and I will give you a look at Leonardo while I take the rest of them out of the package. So you can see him here with his nice light green skin. And he's got some uh, throwing stars on his belt there. And he has his, his headband blowing off in the wind to the left. As you spin around, you see that nice shell with his uh, katana mounts on the back and this bandolier, which is its own piece. It's not molded to the turtle. And then you can see all the nice little design on his uh, green skin there all the way around. I like that nice coloring. Uh, let's see how he stands. Easy. All right, so we have his katanas. Of course, he needs those. That's Leonardo. What's Leonardo without his swords? We have a little green turtle, and I'm assuming that this is, uh, you know, pre-mutation form uh, turtle. 
So we'll keep that there on the side. And then we have a range of other alternative accessories. And these are, of course, going to be encased in a little um, bracket. Now, this was sort of a callback to how Playmates did its early generation figures. They put them in this little bracket where you had these little sprues holding them in. These were brown initially. But we have a pizza, we have a throwing star, we have a couple of throwing daggers, and this looks like a, a knife here on the side, and then a mutagen can uh, with a handle. So you could probably put that in his hand here. Uh, but this is essentially, I'll give you a close up of this. So these accessories aren't meant to be kept on this little uh, holder, although it's a nice little display for them. But basically you just kind of break them off on the, uh, on the side and uh, if you have a sprue cutter, which I don't have handy, it's a little easier to do this, but they kind of break out if you twist them and push them through. Here we go. You push them through, they, they come off, and then you could end up using them with the character. So in this case, I'll make a test out this one here. Here we go. Um, I gotta cut these off with, uh, I'll try using a knife. Usually better to do this with a sprue cutter, but uh, we'll see here. Yep, there we go, it came off nice and easy. But uh, here we go. So this is a mutagen canister with some kind of handle grip on it. So you could put it in his hand here, um, basically, and hold it like that. Uh, not sure why, mid play into the, the movie perhaps, but what we really want to do is we want to see Leonardo with his katana. So these will just snap into the hand, nice and easy. They, it's a good grip on them. They're not going loose, but they're not difficult to get into the hands. And we have our, our hero here. And then I want to also test those out in the holsters to see how they, they fit in here. So these are spaced, they're not overlapping. So the blades won't intersect with each other, which I've seen on some other versions of Leonardo, which can be problematic sometimes. So we'll just slide this through. This one's a little tougher than the other one, but it's getting in there eventually. <laughs> there we go. So it's a nice way to display them, have them on his back, move around functional, and then pull them out. So uh, let's take a look at articulation. I'm sure articulation will be similar throughout the turtles, but I'll check it out anyway. So we have the, the head, the ball joint here. It's nice articulation all the way around on a ball joint. We have wrist articulation. We have elbow articulation. We have shoulder articulation, and then it's also on a ball, so it's a separate point there. I don't see anything in the midsection in terms of bending. You get that hard shell, so kind of hard to do that. You have your, your thigh articulation or your um, upper hip articulation, and then that is, that's in a ball too, so that moves all the way around. You have your knee articulation, and you have a ball joint for the ankle here. Um, oh no, you don't, I'm sorry, this just twists left and right. So you have a little bit of articulation there, so that's not bad. Uh, that's a lot of articulation for these guys, and they're, they're coming in about, I don't know, five inches, uh, just a little under what I would say a six inch standard is. Uh, so a different, little different scale, uh, but cool. I mean, a lot of little details on him. Of course, he's got that trademark L, but the little throwing stars in the belt just add a little dimension there. And of course, he has his katana. Uh, and then you have a ton of extra accessories. Uh, if you're one of those people that like upgrading your characters or customizing them, you could paint the accessories, I'm sure. You could find a way to do that. But they did not color these. Uh, and then maybe it was an artistic choice to kind of keep it like a throwback because those were all brown in the original releases uh, back in the 80s. Even this pizza here is silver, so you can color these yourself or you could leave them as is. But uh, these are extra accessories and then you get your little turtle. So uh, would it be a turtle? Uh, it wouldn't be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle unless it had a ton of extra accessories that had nothing to do with the character. And this one kind of keeps on track with that. Uh, let's take a look at Mikey next. Magic of editing, I skipped right to an open Mikey so we don't have to play around with that. So let's take a look at this character here. Uh, slightly different shade from Leo. Um, he has uh, some of the similar design features here with this overlap belt, no bandolier this time. Uh, you can see the different skin color, uh, but it looks like he has all the same articulation, but we'll check that out as well. His headband is going a different way. He's got a completely different shaped head. It's a wide head, which I like that. So this is fun, deformed sort of look to it. And then on the back, you got holsters for the nunchucks and they got four on this one. Uh, as I showed you in the other Playmates video last week, we only found three, which was an odd for the, uh, the, for the Mikey in disguise to just have three. So this one has four. Uh, so, and they have sort of a split on them so you could put the weapon in there and close it, but not completely have to struggle with getting it out of there. So I think that's a nice touch to it. So we'll just test these out and see how they go in there. So he has his nunchaku here, two pairs of nunchaku. And these are painted two-tone here. He has orange handles. And then he has that look of the chain on there. 
So we'll test them out here in his hand. Now these are a little bit wider, but the hands have a sort of flexible feel to them, so I can get them in there uh, easily enough and not have to worry about breaking a finger uh, on Mikey, not myself, but maybe sometimes they're really hard. So here he is with his nunchaku. So that's not, uh, not too bad there to do that. And then we can take them out and put them on his belt. Now they're a little flexible with the chain, so not to worry in terms of, uh, it looks a little more rigid than it is. So you can get them on the side and um, there might be a more optimal way to do this, but I'm just testing this out in terms of having a minimal amount of chain overhang. Uh, but there we go. They'll fit in there really nice. You get to have them in a nice display mode. And then we'll check out his extra accessories. Looking at the articulation, everything's the same as Leo. Nothing different here. So we have the same amount of articulation, same points here as uh, Leo does. Uh, of course, we have a turtle, but unlike Leo's turtle, it is the same shade of green as Mikey. So we have uh, that consistency we're seeing across not just the turtles, but the mini turtles as well. Now his accessories are an orange. If you remember two seconds ago, I showed you Leo's and they, those were silver. Uh, he has more throwing stars. He has a piece of pizza here. He has like a rapier on the end of a chain. And then he has microphone nunchucks. <laughs> you can see in the close up here. So an assortment of uh, weapons as well. Uh, again, these are all single color tone. They don't have any other um, uh, dimension to them. They're all kind of rigid. Uh, and these are just a bunch of extra accessories, a little bit more fun to add to your turtle. And they come in this little display. Uh, you have to cut away with a sprue cutter or however you want to do it. Uh, but that is what essentially is included with Michelangelo. And uh, you can see here the color difference. And um, we'll see if we have a little variety. I think it's just more orange and silver, but these are the two color varieties. Also contains that mutagen can. Not sure if it's going to play into the plot of the film, but we'll check that out when we get to it. All right, let's move on over and check out Donnie next. Super cut over to Donatello. Uh, this one is pretty drastically different than the others. So we'll give you a nice close up here. You can see he's sporting some uh, glasses on there. Again, making him the brainy one. <laughs> That's uh, sort of the, the universal standard for being smart is having glasses. You can see a bit of a, a smartphone there in his little fanny pack sticking out the front, which is layered on top of his Donnie belt. Uh, this is a separate piece, it's not molded into it. Uh, it's kind of uh, attached, uh, I would say probably glued on or something, but you can tell it's a separate piece. Uh, completely different design than the other two turtles. He's a little leaner, looks a little taller almost. Uh, his headband here is blown off to the side as well. You can see the holster for his bow on the back there and that little bandolier he has. And uh, like I pointed out with Mikey from Leo, you can see he's a different shade of green. This is a much lighter lime green sort of to uh, compare to the dark green and the, uh, the, I guess, not so lime green over there. Same with his turtle. You can see the, the turtles here are all different little colors for the little turtles. I'll give you a close up of that in a minute. And then he has his bow. Now his bow is just one color. They didn't do white wraps or anything, uh, which would have been nice around the center. But uh, he's got a little bit of an inscription here on the side. I'll give you a close up of that. But uh, the bow here, just one color, one tone. And uh, if I wanted to, I could put this in two hands because you got that nice articulation here at the elbows. So you could do that two-handed articulation here for the, uh, the weapon, which is bow is a two-handed weapon, that makes sense. And then you could stick it back here in the holster. We'll check that out really simply. Yep, it just fits right in there easy. So another one that's easy to use and maneuver around, which I like because it's difficult to struggle with those holsters when you're trying to get the most out of the figure and it just kills the experience. And then of course we have his accessories as well in this little um, bracket as they come in. Again, that mutagen can with a handle on it. Not sure why that's included. Looks like he has uh, like a three-part bow. I forget what that's called. The one that has the chain separating it in the middle. And then he has a throwing star, a piece of pizza, and then this long sort of spear on here with some wrapping on it as well. So you can see all those in the close-up. Uh, these are maybe a little bit different shade. Uh, they, were they the exact same orange? No, they're the exact same orange as Michelangelo's accessories. So a little bit different uh, range of accessories. The consistency seems to be the pizza, of course, and then this uh, mutagen can across all of them so far. Um, they've also all had a variety of these throwing stars. They've been different from character to character. Um, but yeah, this, this can has been consistent. So we'll see if that plays into the plot and the film again. Uh, but that is Donatello, essentially, with his accessories looking a little bit different. And I'll give you a group shot so you can see the, the range of these at the end. All we have left to do is check out Raph.
All right, I got my wrap here. Um, again, you're gonna see a little slightly, slightly different shade of green here on this guy. Uh, you can tell next to Donnie, he's a little bit um, darker, a little bit lighter, and uh, similar, but not quite to Leonardo, he's a little bit darker. So uh, again, same with the turtle, matching the color, but all they're all kind of different here. Uh, but Raphael will give you a close up here. He's got a completely different, uh, sort of a hood instead of a headband there that he's wearing. Uh, he's got his signature grimace. You could see this little um, scar on his shell on the front. A uh, little different design to his belt. Of course, he has his holsters in the front for the side. And then he has his uh, wraparound on the back and this bandolier kind of sits on top. It's not really molded, but it's sitting really heavily on an indentation in the shell, so you can't really move it. Uh, but yeah, little variety there in the uh, little variety, of course, in the knee pads. The wraps are a little bit bigger because he's a little bit bigger. A little wider, a little sturdier character. So a little variety in the design. Uh, we have his sai here, and these sai are different. One's got some knurling on it. I'll show you a close up here, and the other one doesn't. Uh, it's a little wavier, like it's seen a little bit of uh, battle damage on it. So uh, kind of cool that they have two different sai. They're a little unique instead of being symmetrical like they usually are. Uh, so here we go. We'll put these in his hand. It's actually look quite sharp on him. Really nice fit into this hand, little fearsome little character. I like this, how this looks. And then we'll test it out in the belt here as well. We'll see how this sits. Now these should just sit in with blade in and uh, sit kind of close to his armpits like we've seen it in the, the show or the movie, and they do. And they sit in there really well. I like how that looks, that's a nice fit. They did a great job engineering these uh, holsters for the weapons. Um, I, I've seen them struggle sometimes with these holsters from figure to figure, from uh, maker to maker. Like it just really depends on the, the character and the weapon. But in this instance, they all seem to work really well and they're easy to get in and out. So let's turn to bonus accessories, I'll call them. He has a piece of pizza. He has that mutagen can. It's been consistent through all of them. Uh, he has these, I forget what they're called, but these little uh, rake weapons um, with the hooks on them at the ends. He has two throwing stars and then he has a uh, throwing knife or dagger. Uh, but this is in silver, like Leo. So uh, Leo and Raph, and then Mikey and Don, same color um, uh, weapons holsters or holders here uh, that you gotta separate, but all of these are here. All of these could be added to the character to add a little more play. You could paint them if you wanted to, if you wanted to customize your character. Uh, but that is essentially all there is with these characters. They have those extra bonus accessories, but we all know and love them with their just their core accessories. So why don't I give you a nice shot of all these guys together and you can see the variety of the colors. So we're at the end of our review. Here are all our turtles with the variety of their colors here. Uh, some more drastic than others, so it's kind of hard to make that out. But you can see panning across here that we have our Leo, our slightly lighter, to Michelangelo, darker, to Raphael, uh, lighter, and then Don uh, Donatello, even lighter. So. We have a variety. I know Leo and Raph look a little close, but they're actually different shades. Um, and then the turtles match them one for one, their little baby, or not baby, but pre-transformation versions of themselves. Uh, I think these are pretty cool designs. You can see the kind of, a lot of variety here, kind of weird looking. I like the Michelangelo with the wide head and the Donnie with the slender body and the Raph with the bigger frame. I think this is kind of cool to have this a little bit more artistic and really looking forward to those other characters you see on the back of the package, that really oblong looking um, rock steady with the, the horn protruding way right past the body and then the really long snout on the bebop, um, even Leatherhead having that really bizarre kind of look to him with the goggles and then the super fly character, everything kind of looks really fun here. And uh, Splinter wearing flannel, it almost it looks like. It's, it's going to be interesting to see these characters as they come out in uh, figure form. But these are pretty cool. These should be on shelves either later this week or at some point next week or whenever they stock them at the stores. But they, they will be releasing in the next week or two in advance of the film. Uh, so pretty cool, interesting design. Little diversions from what we've seen recently. A lot of the Playmates uh, Turtles have been... Uh, essentially re-releases of vintage turtles or just a modern spin on them and then we saw the Ninja Elite series which is kind of giving them a cartoon aesthetic or a movie inspired aesthetic so a little bit more of a premium look so this is a divergence we're seeing a, um, a sort of a 
new media that they're building off of. So this is interesting with this little variety of styles. So kind of fun, kind of new ground here and still a lot of articulation. So great as a uh, action figure in that realm as well. So that's all for this time. Of course, we'll be covering more Turtles news and we'll be covering more Playmates news as time goes on. Uh, we'll be heading to SDCC in I think about three or four weeks, four weeks maybe. And uh, we'll be able to capture all the latest news from Playmates, from everybody <laughs> on Turtles that produces Turtles. A lot of Turtles licenses out there. NECA, Super 7. Uh, so we'll check all those out as we're on the show. There's going to be, I'm sure there'll be some new things to show you guys. Uh, so that's all for now. Like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you guys next time.